Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know that I came from western Pennsylvania, and around Pittsburgh, they call the area the Seven Hills of Pittsburgh. There's a, a Polish hill and an Italian hill, and all the different uh, ethnic groups that came into the area because of either the coal or the steel, uh, kind of, they all kind of congregated together in one area because it was familiar with regard to their countrymen. Well, I grew up in a little village called Grapeville, and it was basically a miniature of the seven hills of Pittsburgh on one hill. There were Italian folks that lived there. There were Irish folks that lived there. Uh, there were German folks that lived there. Uh, there were uh, blacks that lived there. There were Caucasians that lived there. Uh, there were American Indians, American natives that lived there. Uh, there were straight people. There was even a gay couple that lived there among uh, the families. And my brother and I were, uh, were we call them paper boys, but we were paper deliverers, carriers at the time. Um, he was the older one, so he delivered the, the route first, and then he kind of handed it off to me whenever he kind of aged out as a teenager and was able to get some other more meaningful work. Uh, and we delivered the papers to the neighborhood, and there was this one lady that we delivered it to. She was a, an elderly Italian lady. Her name was Annie DeCessor. And she lived a couple houses down from where we grew up. And on one occasion, as I was with my brother, uh, she said to him, she said, Hey, Frankie, I'm going to make you breakfast the day you get married. What do you want for breakfast? And my brother responded, Spaghetti. <laughs> well, about eight years later, fast forward, a knock comes on the door the morning of my brother's wedding, and it's Tony, Annie's son. And she, my mom opens the door, and Tony says, this is for Frankie, from my mother. Hot spaghetti <laughs> and homemade marinara sauce. What a wonderful meal he had. Eight years she remembered that. And then about four years later, on June 24th, 1972, the morning of my wedding, a knock came on the door. Tony's there again. And he says, this is for you from my mother. Hot spaghetti. Now, I never forgot that because I was never part of the conversation. <laughs> I didn't ask her for spaghetti. But she remembered that she had made it for my brother and she made it for me. And when I went down to say thank you to her before the wedding, she says to me, she says, Oh, that's okay. You two are good of boys. I wish everybody else would have known that, too. <laughs> but I, I, it was such a wonderful meal. You know, and Annie was, was renowned for her cooking and her baking. She was absolutely marvelous. We made sure we delivered her paper directly to her door. Because there was always pastries or something on the other side of the door. It was wonderful. And she was renowned in the area for her homemade, very thick, homemade spaghetti noodles. They were wonderful, too. But you know what? It, was, it wasn't a, a big meal. It wasn't anything spectacular. It was homemade spaghetti and marinara sauce. But it wasn't the meal itself that was so wonderful. But what was behind the meal? You know, that this little old Italian lady would think so much to get up early in the morning, make that, have her son deliver it to our home, and say, hey, this 
is for you. And that's what made that thing so darn special. And I've never forgotten that. In today's gospel reading, there's also a story about a very special breakfast prepared for the ragtag group of disciples of Jesus. And it wasn't anything really special about the breakfast, just some bread, some fish baked on charcoal on the shore, something that they would have had routinely. But what made it so special was what was behind the meal. The risen Christ was the host. It was prepared for those who were going to be going on a special mission. It would remind them of who they were and who they were going to represent when they went out. It would nourish them for their journey but it would also strengthen them for the challenges that they were going to encounter. A simple meal of bread and fish, prepared out of love, and a meal that would leave a lasting impression on the disciples. You know, as the church, we celebrate that kind of special meal as well every week. A meal prepared for the church by the bridegroom of the church, Jesus Christ. A meager meal of bread and wine. Common stuff in Jesus' day, common stuff in our day today as well. Prepared out of love for the world. A meal that is not just there to sustain us physically, but also to sustain us spiritually to everlasting life. A meal that is an indication of something much greater yet to come. A meal unlike any other meal we will eat. Because it's not the meal, but what is behind it that is so important. You know, if we only see a wine-covered wafer that we dipped and put into our mouths, or a morsel of bread and a little sip of wine, in the much larger scheme of life, then we've missed the real meaning behind it and in it and under it, around it and through it. And in the style of, of our old Italian neighbor, God is saying, I'm going to give you life through my life. And it's not just going to be good. It's going to be great. And with that meal comes an invitation. And if it's good for you, then share it with others. Do you understand? Do we understand that this meal is God's claim on us to share the goodness of God with the world? Something so simple as a meager meal that is packed with so much meaning and motivation It can only be God's work to eat and then feed God's sheep. We eat, and in eating, our sins are forgiven. We eat, and we do this in remembrance of Christ, who authored this meal for us. We eat. The church family gathers around the table of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a family, gather to eat and to celebrate and to share. A memorable experience like no other in life. And a life-enhancing experience as well. As we return to the state of our baptismal grace, If you love me, feed my sheep. Eat and share the goodness of God. Amen.